Hi all. Okay, I'd like to show you Leela in round two in TCEC season 13. So round two against Senpei Chess Engine, which we've been exploring in other games recently on the channel. So Senpei is like the Japanese words uh, for uh, a kind of master, you know, trying and, uh, and the people below Senpei want to get notice, get attention for, from the masters. Okay, so uh, let's see. Does Leela get notice in this game? c4 e5 this is the the two book moves given to both sides so this is the end of the book here english opening now we see knight f3 knight c6 now the slightly unusual e4 which does weaken d4 uh the main book line is g3 here for example this has been seen quite a lot at super geo level where there's a very interesting taking on c3 and playing for e3 this is st stems from a a, a carp off a Kasparov Karpov uh, World Championship match where this this variation uh, was, was seen quite a bit but anyway e4 was played by Senpei Bishop b4 d3 uh, now d6 a3 so white's not concerned about the double pawns maybe is looking forward to b file pressure etc and the bishop pair but Lula does take is she able to play like Nimzovich in this game with a restrained blockade the strategy against the double pawns well knight d7 which is in advance of any pin on the knight so already a very clever move because it's not only trying to blockade potentially double pawns it's it's prepared now for bishop g5 because now there's f6 this weakening of the light squares is not t exploitable it's it's a benefit of this particular position it seems to be able to play like this now knight a5 so here we see d4, b6, so black's trying to blockade white's double pawns, playing like Nimzovich himself. Bishop e2, bishop b7, hitting the pawn. The pawn's protected here. Of course, white doesn't want to close up. That would make the c5 square pretty juicy here. So knight e2, sorry, knight d2, queen e7, white castles. c5. So the full blockade on the double pawns. d5. And the bishop comes to c8 now. We see knight b3. Now you might think in this position that black would take on b3 here because surely knight takes a5 cannot be allowed, right? Guess what Leela plays here, which I find kind of incredible actually myself, the whole concept here. So black to play, what would you think about this position usually? What would you think to play? It's a great one. Black just castles here, just allowing knight takes a5. This is a really dynamic, aggressive uh, decision. This is almost like, <laughs> this reminds me a bit of uh, Spassy against against Fisher when, when Fisher allowed doubled h pawns, but then and I had a brilliant game after that in, in the Benoni. Uh, it reminds me a little bit about that because if knight takes here, queen takes this position. Uh, White's going to have a4 and a5 on the cards. Maybe not immediately a5 here. There's a better way of playing it in this position. But keeping it in hand and aiming to first exchange off the light square bishops, because a lot of black pawns are on dark squares here, like drafts. So this position, for example, tempts some weaknesses, bishop g4, and then a5 at the right time, like this, could be in really uh, White's favour. So this is really the first incredible decision, black castling here. Off the takes, takes queen a4, and you might think, has Leela gone mad? Did we configure it for t set correctly? Is Leela suffering somehow? A glitch? Well, it's a full pawn sacrifice, positional pawn sacrifice after knight b6. Uh, White wants to take this pawn really because, well, that was the intention. If, if say, the queen goes back, then maybe it's something like bishop a6, and that's pretty nasty for c4. That would be ideal for black. For example so the qu queen takes a5 so the queen is a bit trapped though is it in siberia is the queen in siberia on holiday <laughs> f5 is played and leader is playing on the king side this does have a familiar tone to it this has leader all over it doesn't it this game f3 is played there's a beautiful <laughs> variation behind the scenes trying to use this pin pawn i noticed with rook a b1 f4 rook takes 
Now not F takes E3, but guess what? Black could play in this beautiful variation in this position, which it it secures black a clear advantage. This is actually an incredible, stunning move, Bishop H3. This is just a variation. Uh, if F takes, uh, this is even this position. It's just a normal transaction, but here, offering a second piece is Black's going to quickly get back both pieces in in various circumstances. For example, takes A takes hits the queen, and so now takes here is good because there's always Queen G5 check after as well. So this position, uh, black would have a big advantage. So there's that beautiful line showing that actually the queen might not be that uh, dangerous in this position on rook AB1. Yeah, this rook AB1, I wanted to test this liability of the pawn here. Um, let's have a look at this again, just for a moment. Uh, so here on bishop h3, rook, uh, on g takes h3, let's have a look at this, a takes hitting the queen, then f takes, sorry, we've just seen that, <laughs> um, there's a variation instead of taking rook b2, queen g5, so that threatens chapmate, g3, f takes, this ends up just being massively better for black winning the exchange so yeah i thought this is just an interesting to, to take note of this b file dynamic play if it's available to white it doesn't seem to be basically in a nutshell so let's move on f3 bishop d7 and now the rooks are connecting hello hello their rooks are protecting each other it's more secure and the queen uh hasn't got a4 for both pieces or b5 so the queen really is looking a little bit as though it's gone on holiday to Siberia here. Rook, sorry, Queen A6, and the Queen's not even given B7. So the Queen's kind of trapped here. So a stunning pawn sacrifice to get a kind of trapped piece. And what does this mean? What's the advantage of doing this freezing over here? Well, it's to create an action scene over here. Leela's the director of this film, and wants most of the action to appear on the King's side so h5 is the signal this is trademark leela all over and that's what makes me happy about this particular game in round two trademark leela here yeah. e takes f5 uh against serious serious hardcore uh senpai i believe it's actually 16 core not 43 because i don't i think they had some stability problems above 16 might just be on 16 but it could have had 43 if if it was stable enough if if that technical note changes i'll put it in the pinned comments of this video by the way so e takes f5 on a4 let's just test a4 here uh, f4 this position black can just take here without punishment because rook takes back fires to try and win two pieces a takes just protects the bishop black's winning totally there trapping the queen so um e takes is played which does mean uh, Black's bishop is really good here after bishop takes, eyeing b1. And the rook moves here. Um, clearly, it's a good idea to move the rook. Uh, if if the queen tries to like make it an exchange sacrifice, then actually knight d7 is the strongest. The knight holding the rook, the rook holding, it's firmly reinforcing b8 and then just winning an entire rook <laughs> is not a good idea for white so rook b e1 we have h4 the action scene over here now is progressing humbly at the moment with the advance of the h pawn what is it doing what is this naughty h pawn doing a a an attempt to get the queen out of siberia there's knight takes d5 hitting the queen and then bang knight takes e3 so the queen's left in siberia for the moment queen f6 another subtle wanting to speed up this side of the board type move bishop f1 queen g6 and actually like the aforementioned classic 1972 match game uh spassky against uh, fisher fisher managed to get a queen on g6 in one of the iconic games uh it's starting to remind me a bit of that f4 uh rookie eight now this does let the queen have b7 
So what's going on here? Well, H3. Black, Leela, is weakening white, potentially fatally, on the light squares here. That's what's going on with the H pawn. The form pawn, the form pawn, T-H-R-N, has arrived, guys. Has arrived. This game is form pawn enabled. Okay, because it's actually left with G3. It's it's a pinned pawn anyway. It couldn't take on, a, on H3. Now, if A4... Let's have a look at a4 as an example. What are the dangers here? Well, say e takes. Black's quite faster than the e file. hg creating a pin piece. Bishop c8 hitting the queen. Knight takes c4, exploiting the other pin on, on, on e1. And then going back to exploit this pin, it's just really nasty for white this position. So that shows some of the dangers. Uh, for example, if we follow this through, taking the knight wreaks havoc with the queen in this particular configuration as an example absolute havoc taking on d5 and we can even have a checkmate so this is getting really dangerous if white just leaves this pawn to be taken getting a pinned bishop there so we have g3 e takes now rook takes our bishop takes we just take on e1 Remember, the knight is holding the rook, so there's no queen takes because knight takes. So that's not possible for me to do. Just in case you were wondering for a moment. So we have rook ab8 offering the a7 pawn. Go back to Siberia. Go, 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 go sightseeing. Queen takes a7. On queen c7, knight d7, for example, this position is very, very nice because there's access to the seventh rank as well you know black has the more active rooks and say so, say so we get this position it starts to be quite crushing if uh, the queen can come and join the rook this is just an example and then the rook can be nudged from f2 this is just a fictional variation showing you some of the dangers of the rook crashing through to the seventh rank here so this is really really nice that the rooks you know got that possibility and maybe even joins with the queen later if the bishop moves out of the way queen c2 so those are some of the the background possibilities which are also they're more vividly introduced now rook b2 is definitely on the cards but here instead now rook takes e1 here and now bishop g4 we have bishop d2 so the queen has got access along this diagonal but actually now the rook takes the e file route queen a4 now knight e5 this is afforded by the position the queen's holding e8 against the glare of the, the queen there knight f3 check is threatened and here white gets desperate this is actually a really difficult position uh, for white where well, it actually goes into desperation mode it seems with rook takes g4 before we move on I, I thought actually this is uh, an inserted analysis here why white had to sacrifice the exchange let's just explore a few possibilities so white played rook takes g4 but why on king h1 it seems rook f8 and black's getting a very very strong irresistible attack for example rook takes f8 let's just run with this for a moment king takes a few spike checks here but black fundamentally has got a killer attack of the check check for example winning the bishop on d2 black has a big advantage there uh, in this line let's have a look at this line again off the, off the rook f8 instead of rook takes f8 check let's have a look at say queen b3 which doesn't really do anything the queen's really shut out of d1 and c2 here but say the queen is trying to do something maybe with, <laughs> at some point with queen b2 or coming back as the opportunity happens but rook takes f4 is just too quick here the action scene has been set very quickly against the black king here for example this is terminal so it seems here after rook f8 it's pretty bad news uh, this position is bad news for white as alternatives instead of rook g4 again let's have a look at uh, something else now uh, so say queen b5 then just check and black's just winning the exchange just takes to the bishop and you might think well that's some compensation isn't it so let's follow through here rookie two this position is uh is just all over 
yeah it's just too strong the bishop can't move without queen takes h2 here you can see the rook on the seventh is, is, is absolutely winning and here black can even put the king on h6 here and then crash through with an attack so we're starting to see why it's necessary uh, to sacrifice the exchange on rook f2 here instead of rook takes g4 so rook f2 again knight f3 check just uh, wins the exchange anyway bishop h5 is a clever move here to protect e8 as an example and d6 protected so white's not quick enough with the outside pass pawn now after queen c2 for example then queen takes c3 and actually the queen works well on the dark squares with the bishop on the light squares here to checkmate the white king so yeah i just wanted to explore with you why in particular this exchange sacrifice was deemed necessary by the chess engine here it takes g4 is played knight takes g4 so holding on to the rook here the queen can't take on g4 queen d1 rook f8 and now queen e2 is played on bishop takes h3 then knight f2 forks the queen and bishop uh, for example this position queen takes e6 is just totally winning for black uh, so here uh, that form pawn cannot be taken queen e2 is played uh, you might wonder hold on what what is actually going on here say I'll give you a token move black is actually threatening knight takes h2 on king takes there's check and black is crashing through for example here check check and this is mating on bishop h3 uh, check mate so this is very very dangerous uh, position so queen e2 is played here and now the other plays rook f2 this looks absolutely wonderful news skewing queen and bishop here uh, we have queen takes f2 yeah if queen e6 check we just take that and take here there's no problem with the pawn at all uh, so leaders winning now the queen basically after rook f2 because white takes on f2 so this is looking like very very good news the queen against the two bishops black has got a nice late pawn over here to target later as well queen c2 it looks as though it's all over bar the shouting <clears throat> king f7 black white takes that as alternatives uh, bishop f4 they don't look very uh, tempting check check i'm oh, sorry taking on c3 is, is a big advantage uh on bishop e2 instead queen g2 check and then we just take on h2 so okay so here bishop takes h3 queen takes c4 so d5 is weak that's protected queen d3 hitting the bishop queen c2 check and now queen e2 harassing that bishop pushing it away from uh the scene so the a3 pawn can be targeted eventually first taking on d5 here yep that was winning d5 and now aiming for a3 the poor little a pawn but first check dragging the bishop back to not even allow bishop d5 so keeping the bishops under lock and key and now d5 liberating the position creating a pass pawn which the bishops can't handle um so here after c4 bishop f3 white actually resigns here if the game continued the pass pawn is just herded basically with the queen it really is a big advantage for black just to have the pawn here so Lila wins in round two in spectacular style uh, I'm gonna I'm thinking of inserting a key variation I've just noticed was missing before the uh, exchange sacrifice so that might be an insertion in this video hope you enjoyed it uh, check out the uh, pinned comment with the full analysis which you can follow along along with this video okay two out of two for Leela in TCEC season 13 stunning game I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.